Hello everyone and welcome back to Senior and Living Today. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back my saltines. It's good to have you back. Today I want to know what's eating you or what are you eating? And is that even the problem? As seniors and caregivers, we're so busy taking care of everyone else and I keep trying to remind us that we need to take care of us. And I think I'm experiencing something that I think a lot of you might be experiencing. And I want to know if that's true and how you're dealing with it. As caregivers, I find that we work one job, two jobs. A lot of caregiving shifts are 12 hours a day. Some caregiving shifts, if you're taking care of a family member, are 24 hours a day. And we don't take enough time for ourselves. If you, even in the past, have taken care of an ailing or aging parent or grandparent, you know how time consuming that is. And it can be either physically, emotionally, mentally or all of the above exhausting. I mean, people experience that with new babies and with new pets and their parents and the clients that they're caring for. And I'm saying that because a lot of us struggle with our weight and people who don't struggle with their weight will say things like, you know what to do, so just do it. And they're not realizing that what you, you know what you need to do a lot of the time, but you're too exhausted to do it. It comes down to making a choice and you're just like, I can't. I'm exhausted. When I sit down, I'm done. I can't do any more. I think a lot of us have either been at that point or nearing that point and people who have not been there do not understand. And I first wanna say, I get it because I do that, have done that, have worked two jobs, have been exhausted and think, should I go to the gym? Should I go to that boxing class? Should I go to that aerobics class? And I've done all those things. I've done all those things, and I don't think there's anybody who wouldn't say I'm a hard worker. I've worked two jobs for as long as most people have known me, and you get tired. And what I have found, and I don't know if any of you have found that, let me know. What I have found is that over the years, as I have aged, my metabolism has not been forgiving at all and I have put on average four pounds a year. When I sat down and I looked at it, it was looking like I was gaining about four pounds per year. And when I would go to the gym and I would go to the dance class and I would go to the aerobics class and I would put on my Fitbit and I would go walking, the results I found did not seem to measure up with what I was doing. And the weight was still catching a hold of me. And, you know, doctors stick pretty firm to that BMI chart and that weight scale. And so even though, you know, I've been putting on for a, on average of four pounds per year, my doctors have been on me since I was what I considered small at that time was a size eight. And my doctor was like, oh, you're short. You're five foot two. You're, you're overweight. And it, that, I heard that in my head and I was never able to rise above it. And it just kept coming. So now, I am a senior for real, the weight got a hold of me, and then the medical things that go with it have come along. 
So you hit that point where they say, okay, you need to, you need to be careful. Your, you know, your blood sugar's high. Okay, what does be careful mean? Be careful to me meant less candy bars, less ice cream, less pie, less dessert. And then I went back to the doctor six months later and he's like, Ooh, your numbers are, your, your blood sugar numbers are, are, they're too high. They're too high. We're now going to classify you as type two diabetes. And I'm like, I'm not eating the sugar. I'm not eating the cakes, the pies. I'm, what is going on? Well, then it turns out I bake bread, you know, not thinking bread is a carb while you're watching all these people going around on, um, what is it, the high protein thing they're doing. Um, so I'm cutting out the sugars and, um, but I'm still having carbs. So my blood sugar kept going up and then they classified me as type two diabetic. So keto is the word I was looking for. So a lot of people went to keto. I'd done keto before. I did keto before and my kidneys didn't like keto and I ended up with kidney stones more than once. So you have to follow not only what your doctor's saying, but what your body is saying. And so once I got that classification of, okay, you're type two diabetic now, which everyone knows you can turn around, you can fix it yourself, you, you know, or other people say you did it to yourself, you have to undo it to yourself. And then you have to figure out what is the strategy to undoing it. Is the strategy cutting out the sugar, the sugary treats? Is the strategy cutting out uh, all bread, pasta? Uh, then you're left with what? Is that for some people, is that cutting out juice? Is that cutting out soda? which I'm not a soda or a juice doer. So you have to kind of have, figure out what it is and see what will help fix it. So my doctor said, well, you know, you cut out the sugars. That didn't help enough. You were eating more bread and then it, it, it kept going the other direction. So now he says, we'll try you on metformin. Now, I don't know about you, but I had heard horrible, horrible things about metformin. And I was petrified at the thought of having to take it. On the other hand, I have my doctor in my ear saying, well, you need to take it because we need to get your blood sugar under control. And so, you're, you're, you know, the decisions are always yours. You're at the do I or don't I? So I thought, okay, I'll give it a try, even though I've heard horrible things about it. So I took the metformin and the side effects that they mentioned for everyone else. Um, I'm not going to say for everyone else because I'm sure there's a ton of people who take it. The side effects that they named were also side effects for me. The nausea was unreal. Um, there was no vomiting, thank goodness. There was no uh, effect to my bowels or you know my digestive system in that way. But the nausea and the pain, the stomach pain, I couldn't decide if if it was bad timing and I was having appendicitis or I was having um, a gallbladder issue, but it, it was the metformin. So the, the, the pain in my stomach was so intense and um, they say that one of the side effects can be a headache. Now, years and years and years ago i used to be a migraine sufferer which i'm not anymore but anyone who's had a migraine knows what that kind of pain feels like 
And on the metformin, I experienced pain, but it was not where you get migraine pain. It was back in the middle of the back of my head. It felt like somebody was trying to chisel through the back of my head. I have never had pain in the back of my head like that. I've never had pain in the back of my head, but that was excruciating. And that is when I drew the line and said, mm, need to go back into the doctor. So I, I called them and they said, yeah, you're having, you know, a severe reaction to this and you need to discontinue taking this medication. So my, my first thing is when people say, there's an easy fix for anything. There's never an easy fix. You know, when people, if you have been prescribed metformin, insulin, anything, and people tell you that's the easy way out, they don't know. It's not the easy way out. It's a road you're trying to see if that road goes through. For me, that road did not go through, but that was the road my doctor thought, hmm, let's try this road. Yes, some people can have, uh, what is it, a lap band or gastric bypass, and people will say, that's the easy road. But if you're like me and you know people have that have gone down that road, you know that is not an easy road. It is expensive. There is a recovery time. The depletion it does of your body of vitamins and minerals and the struggles that you can still have with nausea is, that is not an easy road. That is not an easy road. That is also a difficult road, but it's a different road. For some people, the road is go to the gym or P90X or start running marathons that's that's not an easy road the training for that is not easy you have to pick the road that's right for you so as caregivers and seniors my advice is try whatever you want i was hesitant against the metformin and my doctor was like try it try it try it and then he was like oh, nope 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 that is not for you that's why they call it practicing medicine because they don't know either they don't know either but you have to try whatever you are inclined to and i don't know about you but the metformin was hundreds of dollars i mean i have insurance coverage and so um, it was affordable to me because it was not that expensive. However, um, it was a lot easier for me to stop taking it and throw the rest of that prescription away because it was covered by insurance. People who aren't covered by insurance who buy that prescription might struggle through those stomach cramps and nausea or vomiting and the ex in intensive head pain because they don't want to lose the money that they have invested trying to do what the doctor has told them is healthiest for them. So I want my first piece of advice is if you know someone who is struggling with their weight, know that that is the correct word. It is a struggle and it's not the easy road and people look at us and they think, oh, they're taking the easy way out. They have no idea what amount of time and effort you have given and thought to what you can do to make things better for your life. So I would say first, do what you think is best for you. And if you find it's not working, consult your doctor. And if your doctor gives you some advice, and you find it's not working, go back again. Go back again and go back again. Because just like many of us have tried 
different diets, the keto and the Hollywood diet, the cabbage soup diet, and the, all the ones that are out there, you know them, the Optiva, the, the Weight Watchers, the, you name it, all of them out there. It is the same way if your physician decides that a medical route is right for you, not every medicine works for everybody. You know, if you are allergic to anything, you know not everything works for everybody. If you are uh, allergic to dairy, some people drink milk every single day and you would be totally grossed out by that. This is like, why? But not everything is for everybody. So I would just say, if you are not someone who struggles with your weight or with your health in any way, with asthma or any allergy, anything, make sure that you are not in a judgment zone. The best place you can be in is a position of support saying, whatever you choose, whatever you want, whatever you think is best, because no one is leading your life for you. Obviously, people who are overweight are doing whatever they think they should to get it under control, because the older we get, the more with or without a weight problem, the more knee replacements we have, the more hip replacements we have, those joints are giving out and the less weight that we can put on them, we are smart enough to know that's the better route to take. So I want to know how you feel about the, um, well, since they put me on metformin, even though I've discontinued that and we're going to try another route, I want to know if you've been on it, what did you think about it? What results did you find with it? how did you how did it make you feel and how did people who knew that you were taking it how did they treat you um all the care caregivers i know like i said they've been they they work too much there's a lot of us guilty of that and we work too much and we don't devote enough time to ourselves and to relaxation and to working out. So I just want to know, what is your position um, in this whole um, medicinal way to help try to rescue people from diabetes and other issues that they may have? Let me know. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know what you found that works for you. What tips, advice, or encouraging words would you give to someone who is on a medical struggle to help make their lives better? So please let me know what you think. Do me a favor and please hit the like button. It's free. Please hit the like button. <laughs> hit the subscribe button. And we're going to talk about this a little more um, because this is an ongoing problem for a lot of us. And I know a lot of us need to get it under control sooner rather than later. So thank you for joining me here. I hope you will return again. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on Senior and Living Today. Goodbye.